One way of detecting a uh, facial expression automatically is by using what we call geometric features. So these are features that look at the shape of a face, for instance, the shape of your mouth, um, the distance between, let's say, your eyelids. Obviously, when I blink, the distance between my two eyelids will go lower and lower and lower and lower until it's zero, and then after a while it goes up and up and up, and my eyes are open again. It's a very straightforward, direct relation between the feature, uh, the distance between two facial points, and the expression, whether I'm blinking or not. Um, however, finding those facial points in the first place is not so simple. You have to, again, turn these pixels in an image into locations of these facial points. Traditionally, what people did is they built little facial point detectors. So they were really models that could tell for a given little image patch of, let's say, 16 by 16 pixels, whether that was the location of the eye. And then what you would do is you would scan through every possible region in the face until you found the location that said with the highest confidence, I am the eye. It's called binary classification, or at least it's, it's optimizing a single value until you've got the, 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 the highest value and that's where you want to be. That is problematic in multiple ways. It's, it's a problem because you have to search everywhere. It's also a problem because you can, can get stuck in what's called local optima, where you think you're at the maximum, but actually it's not. Because if you have a local optima, let's say you want to maximize the probability of this area being a face, and we're scanning through all the different possible pixel locations. And as our probability goes up, because we're near to what we think is an eye, then it goes down. Now, normally we'd be doing something which is called gradient descent. So we'd be following steps in that direction until we get a flat line. So the gradient is zero there. And we're saying, we're done. We found the point. This is the location of our facial point. However, we've stopped here. Maybe this was not the real optimum, but there's later an even bigger optimum. And we've missed that because we stopped searching. So that's a local optimum, and that's a big problem when you do search searches for facial points like this in a classical binary classification search. The alternative solution is to search everything, but that's generally too costly to do. And costly in terms of processor or resources time, or resources, yeah. What we did is we turned this idea around. So instead of asking every location in the face, are you the eye? we're going to ask a location, hey, um, where is the eye? Right? So it's going to tell us, well, you have to go 15 pixels in that direction, in the, in the x direction, the horizontal direction, and you have to go five pixels down in the vertical direction. And you can do this because there's something called regression, which is again a machine learning technique, and whereas binary classification only tells you yes or no, regression actually gives a, a real uh, a real valued output. So you could use it to predict temperature or in this case displacement in terms of the number of pixels in one direction or the other. So we get a little vector that points from the patch where we asked. So let's say I'm looking for my inner eye corner. We get a little pixel here around my eyebrow. Because there's a relation between of course the appearance of an eyebrow and where my eyes are, because my eyes are always below my eyebrows, it can tell me, well, you have to go in that direction. You're using data you already know. You know about eyebrows, right? Yes. So to build such models, you need quite a lot of data. So we generally tend to use 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 faces, where I painstakingly and, and my colleagues have painstakingly located 68 different facial points on, uh, on that face. And we learn from that data exactly what the relation is between the appearance of the eyebrow and where my eye corner is. And we do that for every possible variations. So we have 68 facial points that we want to know where they are. But actually to train, we're going to use millions of locations in the entire face to give the relation between every possible area where we might possibly test and where the facial point is. 
So you might be able to recognize, say, I don't know, a cheek, but it will tell you where the nose is. Exactly. So every part of the face can sort of vote for where the facial point, let's say the eye corner, is. And then we combine all those votes. And you can imagine that a vote coming from a bit further away will have more error, will be less confident. But as we are voting in one general direction, you get closer and closer to the real point. Also, when you make errors, errors tend to be random. They seem to go in all direction. So they cancel each other out. Whereas all the correct predictions will tend to predict in the same direction. They all go towards my eye corner. So they add up and all the errors cancel out because they're in random directions. That's a, a really nice way of doing it. And we keep repeating that until, we, um, until the confidence is high enough or whether we've reached some maximum number of iterations. And we apply a little uh, shape model on this. So we're, not, we're, we're using a particular shape model which looks at whether the constellation of points, let's say the constellations of my mouth, whether they are feasible, whether they are possible. We're not going to look for the maximum likelihood, for the most probable constellation. Because the most probable constellation of my mouth is a neutral face. That would mean that when I'm smiling, it would say, well, yes, that's possible, but it's less probable because normally you have your mouth shut. Okay, not for me, my mouth is usually open. But in general, it's, it, it would tend towards a neutral face. So we're not going to look for the most probable shape, but we're just going to look for whether a shape is feasible. My, my upper mouth, uh, my upper lip uh, mouth point will not be below my lower lip. Yeah? That's not really possible. Uh, that's, uh, your eye points will not be below the mouth points. So those kind of constraints will see what is possible and what is not possible. And if it's impossible, we replace it by something that we think is the, the best location. But that's, uh, let's say that's a, a, an error detection filter that we apply afterwards. Now, once you have these facial points, you can now start doing some reasoning. Let's say we want to look at the facial points of the mouth and see whether somebody's smiling. So if you have a neutral face, you would have mouth points perhaps like this. We have the two mouth corners and two points on the upper lip and two points on the lower lip. And you get sort of a mouth like this. That would be your neutral face. Now, when somebody smiles, these mouth corners will go up and out, and that will result in a little bit exaggerated, perhaps. Your mouth corners go up. That's quite a joker smile. But as you can see, you can just look at, let's say, the angle here, and compare that with the angle here, alpha 2, and you will see that alpha 2 is much smaller than alpha 1 and therefore you can deduce that somebody's smiling. In general we don't actually learn a set of rules like this but these become features in our machine learning techniques again. We usually use support vector machines, neural networks, deep learning, uh, whatever is most suitable for the types of data that we have and that's how we detect smiles from geometric features. And, and this doesn't uh, matter if people are <coughs> I don't know, completely different in ethnic terms or in look or in sex or... Yes, there will be differences between gender, for instance, or ethnicity in sort of the, the global shape. But the changes in shape, the fact that these mouth points go out and up and the angles go down, they are the same for everybody. For everybody, because everybody has the same underlying structure of facial muscles and we all smile in the same way. I'll show you the big machine, that's uh... yeah. So, this is a 100,000 processor spinnaker machine. 